OK, so what do all these charts mean then? Let's focus on the home battery prediction chart to start with. This is the key one that shows you what's going to happen in the system. We can see on the left hand side here, this orange line is indicating what's happened in the past. This is my battery level overnight. You can see it went down to the lowest um, point this morning and then started rising back up as my solar kicked in. The dotted line here is now. Then <clears throat> if you look at the bottom, you can actually turn on and off the different parts of the chart just to make it a bit less cluttered. So for example, if I just turn these off for a second, turn off all the best ones, you can see this is um, what is likely to happen if I don't do anything. So <clears throat> my battery is actually going to fall down to the lowest point and then go back up again. And that's what it's predicting if nothing happens. The best ones are what's going to happen when Predbat takes over. So if I turn on the best here and the charge limit best and the discharge limit best, you can see now I'm actually emulating the flux tariff here and there's a high rate discharge slot this afternoon. So this discharge window here, you can see the red line, the best falling down as we discharge and create some exports. And then it hits this yellow box, which is a charging window and the battery will charge back up to 100 <clears> percent <throat> and then goes into the next day where it will charge back up with solar and do some more exports again. The blackout period on the right hand side here where it's in, in black is showing beyond the period that Perpat's trying to control at the moment. It's too far in the future for it to assume anything. So it just makes the assumption you charge to 100 percent and hopes you can get there without running out of battery. The best 10 line, if you add that one back on, and again, it's probably easier to see if you turn some of the other ones off, this purple line here is what happens if the solar forecast turns out to not be as good as you expected. So here, it's just gonna make it to the charging slot, even if it turns out worse than expected. And this is being controlled by the, um, the PV10 weighting. So if you turn this off, then we probably will discharge more, but then if the forecast turns out badly, you'll run out of battery and it'll cost more money. So it's a balance there that it's trying to create. The other thing to look at is your energy rates chart. You can see the, um, the rates here. Um, so the, the current rate um, that it's saying that we're on is an import rate of 30p and export rate of uh, just under 20p. And you can see how it evolved over time. This is the peak period where there's a high import and high export and then the low period at night. Um, and you'll um, <clears throat> you'll see the similar sort of scenario with the different charts here as well. That on the the top is the sort of current value of the sensor, and the bottom is just um, what's at the end of the chart, and is probably not that useful. The other thing you can look at is the home cost prediction. <clears throat> so the actual is how much it thinks you've spent so far since midnight today. So you can see this purple line. So on this hypothetical flux scenario, I don't actually have a flux tariff, but I set it to this for this video. It would have cost me £5.84 so far. But you can see on the best scenario here that it's actually going to come down. And this is due to the solar exports and the force exporting to £2.64. In the 10% scenario, this is when the solar forecast turns out to not be so good. It's only £4.64. It's still better than um, than it was at the beginning of the day, so we're still going to get some exports. And the base is essentially what would happen if Prebat doesn't intervene. So the difference between the base and the best is the extra money I'm getting for this export, which is planned over here. The other thing you can see here is the calibration chart. Um, if you set this one up, you can see how accurately predictions are, are running. So the actual is what's actually happened to the battery. And if I, if I, again, you can turn them on and off so you can see, actually, this is what's happened in the past up until now. Obviously, we don't have any future for actuals. How a one is what was predicted an hour ago to happen now. And you can see that lines up really well. So the, there's a good calibration between the prediction in one hour's time and what actually happened. If I add the eight hour one, you can see there's a bit of a difference here. 
um, and this is due to some sort of spike at three o'clock in the morning and I think that's when my car charging might have kicked in but it's all settled itself back down again so I suspect that the car charging wasn't originally planned and then when it got turned on this came the other way and then the 12 is 12 hours in advance and again it's fairly well calibrated so you can see it's predicting up to 12 hours ahead reasonable accuracy the only difference is really the car charging as my octopus intelligence swapped around and changed the slots a little bit the other one you can see is the car battery prediction i don't have the car plugged into charge at the moment so you can see the charging overnight where it went up and then driven the car today and it's gone back down if the car was plugged in on intelligent or i'd have the car charging plan set up you would see when it's planned to charge and the percentage going back up again overnight in the prediction then we have this data prediction one and this just gives you the different bits of data so if you toggle them off one at a time you can see the best load here is the load prediction so this i've got based on a week ago and two weeks ago average so minus seven minus 14 days be careful if you set up 14 days as home assistant normally cuts off after 10 days you have to change the settings and it's a fairly steady load prediction because our house is relatively steady normally the pv prediction when you add that on is obviously it's going to generate in the day not overnight and then again in the day and the pv10 is the more pessimistic scenario where the weather turns out a bit worse and you can see it's a bit lower so the other one is the import so this shows you how much you're going to import and you can see this is a night charging slots where it imports and wouldn't be importing otherwise um, maybe except for a very tiny bit when the oven runs perhaps and the best import is the same one with Fred back controlling the system and they're both the same because we're, we're going to charge overnight regardless the export is the normal predicted exports under the um, under what happens if Fredback doesn't control things and then if we turn on best export you can see there should be a difference between the two let's turn the other ones off so you can see export is lower than best export because we've got this force export slot planned at the top here which should make us some extra money the only other one on here which I don't have at the moment is iBoost if you've got a solar hot water heater you can also model that and it'll show you how much energy that's going to consume but I don't actually have one um, then at the bottom this other fancy graph is power and this looks a bit like the ones you'll get on your um, uh, on your give energy app and it's just predicting the um, the power so if I turn these off again you can see the battery best so this is when it's negative you're charging the battery and when it's um, positive you're discharging the battery and you can see the charging slot over overnight there um, from 2 a.m and then you can if you add in the pv you can see the solar generation so this is solar generation and you can see it's charging the battery because the line falls below and then it's obviously the battery is full now and we're exporting that's why it's level and you can look at the grid so this is where we're using the grid um, so obviously you're <coughs> importing and exporting so here we um we can see some of the uh, planned export slots and then some of the import when we're charging overnight and then the load is our predicted load and it goes up and down quite a bit because there's a power sensor it's not hugely useful on its own so that's what all the charts are about. You can also have a look at the diagrams on the README file as well. Thanks then.